Maybe they think that because the grass is so blue-green, they think it's water and they're landing in it. There's a bunch of them here. Babe, there's like three of them. Go ahead, I know it looks like deep water, but it's not. It's just thick grass. It's okay. Hey, what's up Lawn Care Nuts? All right, so today this is a video that is a long time coming. I'm actually gonna show you how to spray and kill weeds today. Now, I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while, but we've just had so much rain, and then even the days when it's not raining, it's really windy, and I just haven't been able to find ideal conditions to do a video on how to spray weeds. But that's actually gonna turn out to be a good thing, because on top of that, I've pretty much been ignoring the back lawn this year, probably partly because we're moving, and well, really, that's the reason. And you know what? It's given me some great material for new videos, how to get rid of weeds, how to spray weeds. I'll also be able to show you some before and afters with just one application of Milorganite, and I'll be able to show you what happens to this area of my lawn right here. It's been a trouble area for entirely the time that I've lived here. So today I'm gonna to do a video on how to spray weeds, how to kill weeds, how to mix weed control, my philosophy, all of it. So it's gonna be a pretty long video. I hope you enjoy it. Now the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna get rid of this tip right here. We don't want that one. This is the tip you wanna use, it's the fan tip. Now I always get a gallon pump sprayer and I buy a new one every year. The reason I buy a new one every year is because the parts being plastic, they just never seem to make it through the winter in my garage without breaking. I only buy one gallon because I don't like to mix a lot of weed control. In fact, I typically don't even use an entire gallon in an entire year. So that's about the smallest batch that I can get. So you want to mow the lawn just your regular height that you mow. And we want to do that just because the weeds typically sit lower in the lawn than the grass does. We want to get the grass out of the way so more of the weed control will contact the leaf surface. The reason we catch is just to get any clippings and everything else out of the way. Again, we want to expose as much weed leaf surface as we can when we're going to spray. Hey, don't these grasses remind you of the movie Gladiator? So if I'm going to explain integrated pest management the best way I can in layman's terms, we need to think of two different parts of your lawn. You have your desirable crop, which in this case is turf grass, and then you have your pest crop, which in this case would be weeds. Integrated pest management says that we're going to allow some weeds to grow as long as they don't affect the overall use and appearance of our desirable crop. But the weeds in my back lawn are getting out of control. Because of that, I'm going to have to use chemical meads to back them down and get rid of them. On top of that, integrated pest management says when you're going to use a pesticide, then use it in the most minimal way possible. In other words, have a minimal impact on the environment. In this case, we're going to spot spray for weeds using a pump sprayer. I'm going to link below to a video I did on why I don't recommend weed and feed products as well. Think of integrated pest management as kind of a way to approach things with balance, almost like a hybrid approach. But you've never heard me say that before, have you? So let's practice with just some clean water and let's put some bricks in the driveway and let that simulate an area of lawn and the bricks will be weeds. You basically walk a grid keeping the nozzle at knee height and I want you to stroll leisurely through the lawn, spraying when you see weeds and let off and don't spray when you don't see weeds. It's pretty much that simple. And that's gonna be important not only for this practice but later on when we actually spray weeds. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now that I showed you how to spray weeds, now we have to mix the weed control. Now I'm gonna stop right here and say this. You should always read the labeling on the product that you buy. Read that labeling and follow it exactly. What I'm gonna show you here are just some general best practices, but you should always go by what the label says on the bottle that you're using. Now we do wear PPE, personal protective equipment, which in this case is gonna be long pants, long sleeves, eye protection, and rubber boots.
some of you may ask about agitation. Is this going to mix right? And the answer is yes. First of all, it's a very small batch, only a gallon. When you're applying the final bit of water, that's going to agitate it. And then actually, this particular unit here, and most they work this way, when you pump it, the air flows out through the bottom, through the liquid, and up into the chamber to create the pressure. And those bubbles that go up through there, they also agitate the mix. Lastly, let me show you why we use that fan tip. We want to get this super fine mist. The finer the mist of weed control that we can deliver on top of these weeds, the more of it will penetrate the leaf surface. So remember, fine mist. That's also why it's important to keep the wand at knee height and no lower. That mist makes all the difference. So now I'm gonna see if I can show you what this fine mist looks like. It's really important that you see what I'm talking about. So I got the nice camera here. We'll see if I can zoom in and show you. There you go guys, there's pretty much everything I can think of to teach you about how to spray weeds. Stay tuned for the next video in about three or four weeks where I'll show you the results. And of course, as always, I'm sure I've probably forgotten something, so please ask me questions in the comments below. I'm Alan Hayden, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the lawn.